Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Today it's going to be a mini cheese compilation. RJB sent me a few mini uh, replays and said, man, mini is cheesing a lot lately. And I said, hey, maybe I'll do a mini cheese compilation with uh, like a small number of mini replays. So it's kind of a wordplay thing. And RJB said, let's go ahead and go for a full one with mini because I have replays that do feature mini and could fit into the cheese comp. So here we are, here we are with Mini at the top side of this map on Neo Sylphid playing blue, not cyan. And in the bottom left, it's gonna be a red Zerg player. It is Hero. Spamming is 500 APM. Hero does play very, very fast. So yeah, man, going through Mini replays, trying to find stuff that's good for the channel, RJB was like, dude, there are so many games where Mini is just cheesing the ever-loving crap out of players. So let's feature those, I said, and that's what we're doing here. So it's a cheese compilation featuring a mini, also known as a mini cheese compilation. It is not smaller than a normal cheese compilation, <laughs> and hence the confusion. All right, man. So opening up gateway first here, not cannon rushing hero. And it's going to be a DT rush. It's going to be like a two gate, super aggressive opening here. PD the probe moving out. Scouting out here. Boom. Not going to find any Zerg down this way, but that tells him implicitly that there is, in fact, Zerg the other way. Hatch first in it, too, against Mini, who is planning on being aggressive here. Curious to see what it is, though. No gas. Pylon coming in. Everything's pretty normal here, I would say, from Mini. Got a spawning pool on the way. Before gas, that's going to be nice against early zealot pressure, which is going to come because it's a zealot in production. Still no gas, but also still no expansion either quite yet. This could just be a ton of zealot pressure, which always gives me PTSD flashbacks to back when I thought maybe I could hang on the Bird War ladder a little bit, and then I played against a Protoss who did nothing but send zealots at me while macroing up to like Storm and Archons and stuff. And I'm just barely struggling to hold on against these zealots. I don't have any time to macro up. I don't have time to tech up. Where did he find the time to tech up? I don't know. He was much, 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 much better than I was. And I died so hard and it was embarrassing. And I was like, screw ladder. It is a place of sadness and smurfs. And so I never went back. I think that's how that happened. All right. There's the expansion here from Mini. Still no gas from him. Still producing zealots. Zealots here, probe here too. What do we got, hero? What's the plan gonna be? He's like, well, I could use some gas, I guess. And Robert the Zealots here to cause some problems. But a million lings pop out right at the exact perfect time to deal with this guy. And they want to get the probe. Okay, the probe does represent a nice little DPS boost to what the Zealot is trying to do here. And on the other side of it, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Third base coming in from Hero. He says, yeah, a little bit of zealot pressure. Not a big deal. They did clear that guy out behind the mineral line. Nothing to be concerned about there. Got a, <laughs> a little proxy pylon in the middle of the map here. Do we? Gateway coming up there. Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. He's hiding his second gate. So when sneaky zealots show up, it's more than a one gate worth of zealots. It's two gates worth of zealots. Intriguing. I like this play a lot. These zealots holding the line. This probe holding the line as well as it can. This is actually pretty fantastic on the whole. Lings are getting deep enough. There you go. They know there's a second. Oh, crap. They're in. They know there's a second base. So they're not really expecting anything too crazy. However, look at these gateways. And look at this utter lack of gas. Okay, now he knows there's no gas. And the only thing they can do here with no gas if you're mini is go for a ton of zealots or... Look at him getting gas now. Or go for a super fast third nexus, which is maybe the other option that's going on here from mini. But nope, in this case, it's going to be a three-gate mass zealot approach here. There is, in fact, an assimilator on the way. I thought for a minute... This was just to trick the Zerg player, but it's hard to do if you can't kill these links. Cause all you got are slow zealots, man. Hmm. Maybe Hero is the one that's cheesing today with all this ling flooding happening. Speed is almost done. 
Ooh, Hydra Den is complete here. Hydra Speed is on the way, which tells me we want to see a lot of Hydras. A lot of Hydras coming out fast. Oh, sniping probe. Every probe that dies here is so precious for many. Hmm. Hmm. How many kills do you have, Zergling? Two. Ah, I was checking that guy. Oh my gosh, Morlings are in. Okay, well, the Zealots are on the other side of the map now. Surprise, surprise, Zealots are inside your natural base. But there are surprise bajillion Lings here inside Mini's base. Whoa, I don't know. RJB did not say Mini wins all of these cheesy games. <laughs> Looks pretty bad for him right now, doesn't it? 17 to 7 total workers. Drones and Lings fighting against these Zealots. Unarmed to tell who's coming out on top here. Drone DPS being added, just like the probe DPS was being added here earlier. Oh my gosh, these zealots. They're all still alive. Three kills. Uh, four kills. One kill. Get on our level. But you can send drums, drones up over here, right? Boy, this is crazy stuff. Just making lings, not making use of that hider den at all. It's a lot of surprise zealots. Surprise lots are here, friends. And... Zealots are just getting damage done. However, also dying. It's a three-kill Zealot. It's not like he conquered the entire world here. Okay, now we got four. And that's it. Mini taps out. Bam. Mini's attempt to go three-gate. Mass slow Zealot was not enough to take down Hero. But good effort. I like it a lot. I love that he took the gas and never got anything from it. Yeah, so we went two base for a ton of minerals. I mean, I don't mean, have a ton of probes, but yeah, man. It was just going to be a bunch of zealots showing up, but Hero's an absolute monster. No sunkens at all for him. No Hydra support, nothing but lings, nothing but drones. Recognizing that his speedling attack on the base of Mini was able to kill a ton of probes, murder his economy. So anything that uh, Hero was able to get done back here by losing a couple drones was just thumbs up. Excellent stuff. He knew it, he read the game situation, and he took down Mini here in game one. So, yeah, these are not all Mini wins. We've learned that early, haven't we? That's nice, though. I like that we don't know that Mini is going to win every single game that he's featured in here today in the Mini Cheese Comp. So, we'll check out the final score, I guess. But, I mean, in these cheese games, it's nothing too earth-shattering, right? I mean, this is Zergling versus Zealot kill ratio here. Although it's 4 to 1... Yeah, this is actually a good ratio for the Zerg. That explains a lot of why Hero won this thing and then resources a little bit more, but it's only six minutes, so it doesn't really matter. So that's game one. It's in the books. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Also, subscribe. I'm trying to get up to 100,000 subs here in 2024, and so far, making some good progress. Game two is Jadong and Mini. Here on Eclipse, top right, going to be the Zerg player Jadong. Bottom left, it's going to be Mini. Now... I don't know if every single game is going to feature Mini cheesing, just like I don't know if every single game is going to feature Mini winning, but hey, we had that question answered in game one, right? Right. So, Terry the Overlord moving out. There is merch featuring Terry and Petey the Probe. Well, Petey the Probe is in the works, I think. And, uh, yeah, so with Steve the SCV. At Falcon Paladin. Dot store. Excellent. Everything is good. So, what are we going to do? Ooh. A little bit of a... Oh, my gosh. Is that a five pool? Goodness gracious. A five pool from Jadong. Mini. Don't go... Mini wet Nexus first. Rip. Rip. That's not a Nexus. I'm an idiot. Pylon first. Lol. He is walling off in an interesting place. Usually, you want to wall off up here, but... I guess if you want to do, like, the very specific kind of wall off this angle, kind of get the ramp. I don't know. He is up here. Just the pylon is really set back. But he is getting a gateway, which is good. Because, yo, I mean, honestly, going Nexus first against a Zerg player on a two-player map is just asking to die. That's pretty much it. So here we go. What's the play? It's going to be Lings, because what else are you going to do with a super mega early pool here? Bam. Six Lings on the way. Minute 30. It's exactly how we want to do. And this probe's job is to say, was this an early pool? Are there Lings on the way to murder me? The probe is here to answer that question and more next time on Dragon Ball Z. I've never actually watched any Dragon Ball before. But I do understand some of the conventions with it, obviously. Oh my gosh, a million Lings. All right, says the probe. Well, uh, if we can delay these lings getting across the map for a second, that's really good for us. And back home, you don't expand at all. Maybe do you have time to throw up a forge? This is tricky. 
What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Ooh, love a shield battery. Love a shield battery. All right, man. Shield battery, zealot against the incoming swarm. Five lings, because this ling is still. Nope, that ling got his kill. He's coming to join his brothers now. And here we go. Lings are just like, what? Oh, hang on. We just run past everything, get into the main base. Do, 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 do. One zealot. Probes are going to have to fight here without a doubt. Uh, okay, probe down, probe down. You got to kill more probes than two. Okay, three is good. One ling went down. Sixth ling joining the party. He's like, guys. <laughs> guys, I'm here. Guys. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Get in the main base with the rest of us. Dude, thanks for killing that pro back home. That was awesome. So we just got early pressure. So some of this is just mini getting his butt absolutely cheesed in this cheese comp. Incredible. Let's see if he can hold this one, though. Uh, back home, a couple lings on the way, but also some gas on the way there, too, from Jadong. I love this aggression from Jadong so much. Holy cow. Holy smokes. All right. So four links, two kill a zealot if you're not previously injured, and three of them are previously injured. And no more links are coming. So at this stage, I think Minnie's like, all right, let's just get back into probing a little bit. These two zealots can handle these links. It's incredibly annoying. There we go. Killing one of them is exactly how we need this thing to work. Hmm. Mm, another Ling dies. Okay, good, good, good. Mini's stabilized. Mini can honestly probably expand at this stage, I would say. Did send the Zealot across the map here, too. He's going to hide behind the minerals. He's going to try to get as many kills as he can. All right, good defense there by Jadong. Didn't really lose too much. And then four Zealots. My goodness. A lot of zealots being produced out of this one gate and expanding behind it. So this is where Jadong's overlord is incredibly important. He says, okay, so I'm going to see these lings coming across the map, or these zealots coming across the map, and it's not going to be incredible amounts of pressure because there's a second base on the way. And in fact, the zealots choose to turn around because they're like, oh, my buddy died. I don't have any vision over here to see how many lings are being produced. Metabolic boost is on the way. Man, is this just yet another game where the Zerg player's like, yo, you know what's really good? Speedlings. Let's get speed for our lings. Let's pull off gas entirely. Let's not saturate our second base at all. This is a larva producing base. This is not a mineral harvesting base. And here we go. Here comes here comes the boom. I don't think you're getting through this, my guys. Speedlings are good, but not against this many zealots with shield battery support and a cannon coming up. You gotta go now. Because once that cannon comes up, this is over. The shield battery being used at all? No. Minnie's like, I don't need this shield battery to win this battle. This is embarrassing. Look at all my zealots. Okay, there we go. Now he comes in and gets the heal off. Ooh, there we go. Shield battery healing. There's the sound. You can barely hear it. Probe's coming to fight. Two cannons up. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Cannon up, and I think that's it. I really don't think Jadon can bust in here anymore. I mean, they're going to go for the run by... To okay, hang on. Bust down this cannon. By that, I mean completely failed to bust down the cannon, and that's it. Jadong taps out. Mini gets the win in 5 minutes and 58 seconds. Even shorter than game one. You. That was great. What a hold, man. You got Ling showing up. You got speed on those guys. You got to deal with them running around your main base, killing your probes. But he knew. He knew Jadong caught a ton of drones to make this happen, so losing a few probes is not a big deal. Not a big deal. Don't even worry about it, man. Everything's fine, man. And then on the other side of things, just a hold, right? Shield battery was awesome. Probably kept one of these zealots alive, although a buddy did die out there. And in fact, maybe more than one? How many were back here? Four? Did we not make any more than that? He must have. Maybe two died. Maybe two died to those lings. But yeah, this cannon was key. And once the cannon wasn't dead and all the lings that tried to kill it were dead, Jadong's like, well, I'm way too behind to make this happen. So GG, man. GG! Checking out that final score again. What's it going to tell us? 36 to 11 kill death ratio. That's more what you want to see as a Protoss in a PvZ cheesy game. 
against those Lings for sure. And they're just outspending the... Yeah, this was Jadong's doing. The reason he didn't outspend much is because he didn't make that many drones. Aggressive, aggressive, aggressive stuff. Awesome stuff for game two. And guess what? We've got more of this, man. We have so much more of this. Hope you're enjoying it. I'm having a good time. It's Mini, it's Barracks, it's Polypoid. Bottom left, gonna be a red Protoss. It is Mini. Top left, it is Barracks, our orange Terran player, ASL guy. Mini is also an ASL guy, but he's better and higher ranked than Barracks. So, hey, rankings don't mean everything. Just a little bit of a flavor information for you guys. So, again, who is gonna be the cheeser here, man? Woof! Many held off Jadong's cheese, but fell to heroes. Mm, maybe response to cheese? Yeah, I think Minnie was cheesing in game one, and I think uh, Hero just responded to that. That is my analysis. Alright, so. SCVs harvesting. What's up, Steve the SCV? We're in here somewhere. Steve the SCV is the SCV that is selected to scout by barracks. So, maybe it's you building a supply depot. Maybe it's you harvesting minerals and returning it dutifully to the command center. PD the probe here, scouting out as well the wrong way, but hey, RNG is applicable for Brood War. Just in very, very few situations, man. Gateway opening, respect. Respect to barracks with this gateway opening here. Not a Nexus first on this giant four player map. It is viable against Terran. But nope, not rolling the dice here is Mini. Maybe it's a DT rush, and maybe Barracks just delays his detection a little bit. Oof. That would hurt. Barracks on the way, and what up, Steve? Uh, how's it going, Steve? You too are scouting the wrong direction. So, <laughs> clockwise here for Steve, which is the wrong answer. Counterclockwise here for Petey, which is the wrong answer. See, I don't see gleaming metal. All right, so no Terran here. But again, by process of elimination, Barracks is in the top left. What's up, Steve? What's up, Petey? Hope things are cool for all y'all. All right, what are we doing here today, friendo Bobendos? Well. Honestly, factory coming in before expand. Nothing too crazy from barracks. Honestly, it's really not. And a zealot moving out. Robert heading up that way. Let's see what Minnie's considering here. Is he going to go cyber core? Is he going to go for an expand? Which is really, again, pretty darn risky against the Terran player. So there's your cyber core. Nothing too nuts for him there. Probe shows up. Marine is ready to keep that probe out of there. And yeah, unfortunately. But with my friend the zealot... We shall break this one marine defense. Let's go, buddy. And the marine's like, ah, crap. Look, they have two friends. It only takes like 40 hits to kill a zealot if you're a marine, though. It's not great. So zealot's like, hmm, priority target number one. Kill SCV, building factory. No, it was taken away from me. Yeah, every shot on a marine is so good. Two shots on a marine. It's like Dark Souls, man. A marine in this situation, you have to get 100 shots off on the enemy, and they can two-shot you. That's exactly like Dark Souls and Elden Ring bosses and stuff. And Sekiro and whatnot. Sekiro. I don't know how to say that. But anyway. Yeah. Love it. This is, uh, this is Zealot Pressure at its best here, man. Dragoon on the follow-up. But a Vulture's out. Vulture's getting big, chunky damage off on these Zealots. Good. I mean, getting kills off, though. Long distance snipe. Okay, I don't count that as cheese. That was just regular old sending zealots across the map, trying to screw with the Terran player. Let's see what you can get done. SCV takes eight shots from a Dragoon for it to die. This is really good Dragoon micro, though. It's like, okay, maybe, no, went to the high ground. No, okay, can't get any more hits off, unfortunately. Gonna back it out. Singularity charge on the way. Siege tank's being produced. Still no sign of a second base. Ooh, second factory's up, though. When did that happen? All right, so Barracks decides to go for a one base, two fact play, and expanding on the other side of the map here is Mini. Not, not good. No bueno. No bueno for Mini. Not sure if I like this at all, in particular. But yeah, be sure to check out RJB. YouTube.com/slash at RJB underscore TV. Let them know Falcon sent ya. 
Okay, well, Dragoons, Zealots trying to bust up this ramp. Now that there's a siege tank, that's even harder. So we go into a Citadel of a Dune, and this might just be a when behind, make Dark Templar situation. Again, I kind of predicted that before we had any indication of what's going on here. However, do we have time to get DTs out before this attack shows up? This is Marines, siege tanks, there's a Vulture here. Oh my gosh, this aggression out of barracks. I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying that. Maybe, I mean, that might even be warranting a cancel of that second base, maybe. I don't know, dude. Are we going home? Barracks pulling back. Ooh, repairing the Vulture bike. What a friend. What a friend this SCV is. Getting sparks all up in here. I think they ever burn the uniforms of the Vulture bike drivers with these repair sparks. Zap, 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 zap. Hey, another shield battery. By golly, we are just getting shield batteries galore today. Very fun stuff. Okay, we're just waiting for more Marines and more Vultures before we come in here and ruin everything. Oh, man. Well, there is a Templar Archives on the way, and there is not a ComSat station. So maybe, maybe with a hesitation of barracks and then coming back in with more stuff, maybe DPs can get out and save the day here. Dragoons. Okay, spider mines present. Marines. Trying to target fire on these guys. Siege tanks getting hits off on the Dragoons is good too. Vultures, I mean, they can murderize probes very, very well. Given the opportunity, probes are fighting against siege tanks, which is a surprisingly good situation. Spider-Mine, trigger and kill. Excellent job there by Mini. And Mini holds. He is making two DTs, but he holds without them for now. Shield battery not being used quite as much as I think it should be. Repair this guy! Repair him! A little bit! There was a little bit of repair there. Oh, shoot. There's a good repair. Ooh, allowing that to Oh, okay. The spider mines are hard to shield battery repair through. Where are my DTs? Where are they? Here they are. Red cloaks billowing behind them majestically. The problem is there are spider mines. He drags one into the tank, wipes it out, does get killed in the process, but what a hero DT that was. Absolute Hero allows for an extra wall here to get up here so vultures can't bust in anymore and kills the one siege tank that was going to be the massive problem for this wall. DT number two says, all right, my friend, he sacrificed himself and brought honor to all Dark Templar everywhere. I will attempt to do the same. I don't... Mm, Barracks, did you recognize that there was a DT that did that? Did he... Oh my gosh, he's not getting detection. He's not getting to, did I, man, did I predict this game or did I predict this game? Holy cannoli. I did, I've got gift of foresight. Okay, so this is, yeah, that's it. Barracks, like I didn't get detection. A DT showed up in my base. GG, and Mini gets the win. Oh, did Falcon see this coming or what? That was awesome. Yeah, I don't think Barracks recognized it was a DT that did that. I think maybe he thought it was a Dragoon. He wasn't looking at the screen at the very moment that DT came in and dragged a spider mine into the tank. Probably not. Because I think he would have fired up an engineering bay or gotten academy immediately. Would that have been enough to get a commsat station up before the DT showed up? I don't know. That's the tricky thing. But beautiful, beautiful, man. When you're in trouble, make DTs. The second base was fantastic. Two, 32 probes. He's probing through this whole thing like a madman. And one DT wanders in, kills some stuff, and that's all she wrote. What a great, great showing from Mini in that game. That is a tough situation, and he pulled it off like a boss. Mm. 17,000 points to 15,000 points in favor of Mini. Got out produced, but out killed by a heavier number. Structures raised. Nobody killed any buildings today, which is kind of surprising. And the mini outsped the Terran by a bunch because he had two bases. And the Terran did not. All right. GG. GG. That was fantastic. What a display. What a display of how to play against an aggressive one-basing Terran there from mini. We got more of his stuff coming. So, I mean, don't go anywhere, I guess. This is like replay three of something. There's more. All right, we're on Tempest for game number four today. It's going to be Calm, our green Zerg player. And the blue Brotoss, the bottom left is Mini. Do we want to go red versus blue or green versus blue? It's not cyan, it's green. How about we roll with it? This is basically turquoise, I think. A turquoise, turquoise shade of green, which is a naturally occurring color in some places. 
All right, Mini says something in Korean here to calm. Both players are playing under well-known names that you can see who it is at the first glance here. And was that calm featured in that incredible ZBP that I cast a couple of weeks ago? I think it was calm. But maybe not. I am maybe just remembering things incorrectly. Anyway, if you didn't see the epic Holy Smokes DEFCON 1 PVZ, featuring stuff like Maelstrom and Guardians and Queens and Down to the Wire play, ask me, ask me, ask me for a link to that. I read any comment anyone ever makes on the channel at any point on any video ever because YouTube is nice enough to kind of help us out with that and give us chronological comments no matter when the video was posted. Uh, yeah. Check it out. So we're nine pooling up here. Which is fine, right? Like, nine pool... Not too economically aggressive, not too macroly aggressive. Ooh, extractor tricks to get 10 supply available out of nine, too. Yeah, so this is a little bit aggressive. Not as aggressive as that five pool that Jadong went for in game number two. Holy smokes. Can't get much more aggressive than that unless you just straight up worker rush. Which, not very good, it turns out. Because your enemy will have more workers than you by the time you show up. <laughs> and probes are generally better fighters than drones anyway. So, yep. Probes are sticking around, making sure this... I mean, we could cancel the spawning pool. That'd be silly. Two sets of lings on the way. Third set of lings... Where is it? The larva? There you go. Third set of ling on the way. And got that scouted early. Here on Tempest, got a forge up. Oh, that's so sick. Got a forge up, throwing up a cannon. All right, so I think that shuts this aggression down. I honestly would cancel those lings at this point. I mean, the probe would recognize the lings were canceled, and then you could cancel that cannon, get a refund on it, and maybe expand earlier. That's the tricky thing about this. This is why scouting is so important, and this is why that probe is still alive over here for many. The very very reason that it is. Okay, so still a bit of a wide open ramp here. These Ling can come cruising up, so we're going to help wall that off with a gateway. We're going to stick our little proby selves in. Where do we want to wall this off? Right here? I don't know. I don't know how we want to do this, but fall back to the cannon, boys. we got to keep that cannon alive. If that cannon dies, we're toast. But expanding behind this, is Calm. Calm is now getting gas. Is Again, what is with these Zerg players wanting to go for a ton of Lings and take down Mini today? Like, we don't want to play late game against Mini. Mini is terrifying late game with the Reavers and the Archons and the Storm and whatnot. It's a fair point. Fair point, Zerglings. Fair point, Zergs in general. I would probably do the same thing that you're doing right now if I ever ran into the ladder up against Mini. So, this has got to be. This has got to be enough gas. Oh, I lied. Hydroden! <laughs> Hydroden on the follow-up against this nine pool. Probe says, you're getting a second gas. How are you saturating the second base at all? And the answer is, yeah, it's just drones being produced. No sign of more lings at all. There we go. I think that is the first scout on the Hydroden. Maybe not. Maybe the probe got down here when it first started and then get, got there at the end too, which is nice. Cannon taking down this Lurker Egg, which is a map feature on this map and on many other maps. Ooh, a third base. Okay. And a range upgrade. Hmm. So speed upgrade generally means we want to Hydra push and bust your front because we want to get there fast. Range upgrade can actually mean we want to defend against what's coming from you. But also, having the range upgrade, it assists you at the front here, too. You can attack stuff from a further range and avoid cannon shots, right? Tricky. Really tricky stuff. But this third base from Calm is pretty nice. Still doesn't have a second gas. Is making a couple Hydras. Not going crazy with it. Scouting probe finally dies, but after seeing... Ooh, the lair, which is canceled! Lair canceled. Big freaking deal here. Citadel on the way. Speed lots. A good answer to, well, pretty much anything the Zerg player has, with the exception of like a sunken lurker base. And like just a ton of lurkers. They will eat up the zealots. Oh, these guys made it down here. What's up, guys? You walked all the way across that map without me seeing you. Way to go. Very impressive stuff. 
And another Zealot gonna try to join this party, maybe get into this here natural. Alright, Hydroling. And once again, it's like I have a lair. Nope! <laughs> No lair for me. I think at this point, we might just sit here in about 18 drones. Fire up links, fire up hydras, get the speed upgrade, get the range upgrade, and try to bust this front. It's a ramp, though. This is high ground you have to bust. This is harder than doing against just a low ground natural choke, my friend. But Calm knows what he's doing. A little supply blocked. He's worried about Corsairs, but he really shouldn't be because that's a Citadel and no Stargate to be seen from Mini. He knows. Well, now Stargate's coming in. But he's got to know these Hydras are coming to murderize him. And having a Corsair is not going to help with that. Unless you do manage to find Overlords out there and supply block the Zerg and slow down his ability to reinforce your front. I don't know. So, shows up right as speed finishes like an absolute boss. And the Hydras come in and say cannon down and then fall back a little bit. We'll kill a bunch of your Zealots and your probes and try not to get surrounded. Yeah, sell it down. There we go. Hydras show up, swing in, another cannon down, and then we fall back again. Just kidding. Well, no, we probably should fall back because these zealots are problematic. They have the speed upgrade. Look at the plus one Corsair opening that Mini is going for on the back of this. What the heck, dude? I don't know about this. Come on, Mini. Can you hold against this Hydra bust attempt? Once again. Another cannon dies. Really only gets a couple hits off here. The Zealots are providing a lot more value than these poor cannons are. Oh, another probe goes down. But once again, Mini knows. I can afford to sacrifice some probes here. I can. I'm not even microing anymore. Maybe you should be microing a little bit. No? I guess we just won. Yep. That's usually an indication that a player has won the game of StarCraft is when they stop microing during a battle. They're like, okay, either I lost... And microing doesn't matter anymore, or I've won, and microing doesn't matter anymore. That's generally the non-verbal communication we get from a situation like that. Mini's not tapping. Mini says, you know what? No. I will not let this Zerg player take my home from me that I have built with my bare hands here on Tempest. Calm's like, well, then you will die. Comes up the ramp, got his reinforcements. Yeah, I just... Mm, zealots down, probes down, cannons down, cannon down, cannon down. It's like two volleys, maybe three to kill a cannon, and that's it. We done. It is a nine drone play here for Calm. Nine. Did he lose some? Was there some kind of a zealot attack on the other side? Do you have kills? Oh, he sure does. There was totally a zealot attack on the other side. That's why Minnie's staying in this game. He says Calm doesn't have any drones left. But what do you have to deal with this many Hydras? Not a lot, says Minnie. And GG's out. All right, hold on a second. We got to go back and check that out. Back it up about a minute. Nope, still nine drones. Back it up more. I like rewinding when it's a short game because it's super fast and it's explosive. Okay, so yeah, there's 15 drones. Nope, this guy already has kills. Do you already have kills from coming up here, though? What the fuck? Nope, this guy. Okay, I think it's this dude. Let's back it up a little bit again. Okay, so it's like 16 drones. All's well here in Zergland. This zealot is here to cause problems. This zealot is here to cause problems. I think he already... Oh my gosh. We're just in the name of making sure... No! He does get his kills up here. Oh my gosh. There's a ton of zealot action that I missed on this map. Blue on this map is hard to see. Yep, he just killed the drone up there. So man, 18 drones, is that the number? 18 drones is the number, friends. So there's 18 drones here for Calm. He's making Hydras, he stopped making drones. Right, right, and he starts moving across the map to time it to when his muscular augments upgrade finishes. I kept, yeah, see, I kept thinking the blue was these eggs, I guess. Glancing at the mini map, he gets one drone kill. 
This zealot's heading up that way too with murder on his mind. And then this guy gets behind this mineral line and says, Aha, only one of you can attack at a time. This is advantageous for me, as always. And then this zealot comes in, wipes the other drone out here at the third base, knocking us down to 16. And this guy wins the fight. He wins the fight. Five kills on him. In fairness, he's also trying to micro down here. So letting that zealot live was uh, just a too much stuff going on situation. Still 16 drones for Calm. Minnie's putting all of the eggs in the basket of this zealot, man. All of them. Man, hiders are just absolute monsters. This guy wanders in right past the hiders that are rallied outside the main base and says, dun, 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 dun. This guy's like, Can I get more kills? Wait, how do we go? Golly. Alright. Yeah, he basically, these, oh, okay, so, I mean, Calm recognizes this dude's here at some point. But they can't get a surround on him in this angle. He's just, uh, yeah, I don't think that Calm's all that worried necessarily about this guy. Because at this point, he feels like he's got, oh my gosh, got it one. But look at this, Zealot. Oh, my gosh, eight kills and four HP, and then this guy shows up. Okay, well, you got eight kills, man. Now there's nine drones, okay. But then the reinforcements arrive, and then Calm's like, no biggie. Yeah, did I lose a ton of stuff? I sure did. But it doesn't matter, hiders are good, and I had enough of a lead already that blah. You're a dead nerd. Do I have any drones at my third base? No. Anybody working at my second base? Nope. I have nine drones getting minerals exclusively at my main. <laughs> it's not a great position, but you know what? The sooner the game's over, the more your economic position doesn't matter. Absolutely hilarious. GG, man. That was fantastic. Not letting you bump up your score, though. Oof. Yeah, I loved the canceling of that lair bike home. I don't know if it works, but I like the intent behind it. Hmm. So Calm Out produced, killed similar numbers of units. When you're dealing with a lot of Hydras, yeah, this is not a number you want to see if you're Protoss. 12 to 0 building drays is also not what you want to see. And then Mini did outspend the Zerg, but outspending is not everything, especially if a lot of that came in the last minute or two of the game when it didn't really matter. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so GG. That was a fantastic game from Calm. Let's see what's up next. Guess who it's Minnie, and it's action this time, playing the role of Zerg at an orange top right here on Polypoid, and top left it's Minnie sporting white, and Terra the Overlord scouting the correct direction this time. So again, who is going to be the cheeser here, man? A nine pool followed up by a second and third base and a Hydra bus timing. Man, Calm executed that perfectly, even though he lost so many drones. Well, a large percentage of his drones, we will say. He won anyway, man. All right, so, Mini. Are we gonna scout out on this giant four-player map just to make sure we are not getting early pooled? That is a good idea, man. Throwing down a pylon first, because you don't need to be here while the pylon warps in, and nope, just going back home. Just going back home to watch his favorite show. Kick up his feet, nope. Just working again. The life of a worker is toil from sunup to sundown. Unless you're a worker at an expired mineral field that you harvest, and then you just get to sit around and take a load off until the player realizes that the minerals are all gone. Uh, all right, so it's gonna be a hat first here from action, the macro zerg. Are we surprised? No, but he doesn't do this all the time, every single time. He does sprinkle in early pools just to make sure. 11 hatch, just to make sure that the Protoss does not know what he's doing, right? 
I think so. Probe gets in, says, you don't have a pool yet. You don't have that gas. There's the pool. I'm trying to put it in a position to hide it from this probe. The probe's like, dummy. I can totally see that. Don't even worry about it, man. Don't you even worry about it. Forge on the way. Oh! <laughs> this is delayed cannon rush against this hatch first from action. Another probe comes in. This probe's taking hits. Mineral walks through those dudes. Can we trap them in here? But that's kind of where you want the cannons to go too, man. All right, more drones are getting pulled off the line. I'm liking this. Is this a fake out? If this pylon finishes, it's real, man. And it is. And it's spectacular. Probe gets behind the minerals and bam, throws up another pylon. What the heck? What does the second pylon do for you? And then gas steals. And then gets a cannon here. And then a zealot shows up. It is the delayed cannon rush with the support of Robert the Zealot in here, too. This is great. Yeah, man, this is really problematic. There are wings on the way, but are there enough of them? I don't know. I don't know if there are enough of them, sir. Lings popping out. Trying to see what they can do. All right, now, Sunken would be massive here, but the cannon finishes up. Lings going to town on it. The cannon has to decide, do we kill the Lings or do we kill this sunken? Porque no los dos. Why are you attacking that one? Oh, because that sunken is basically dead. Dude, this cannon is putting in some work. Okay, I'm trying to help, just trying to help, man. Okay, does get wiped out. Cannon one, cannon two might die before it finishes and it does. Getting those two sunkens up was massive. Both sunkens are dead. But the cannons are gone. The threat has passed. Dude, action. Holding. Holding. Trying to get some gas up here. Speedlings do better against slow zealots. Lings are like, no, don't get back behind my mineral line. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, they're so slippery, though. Look how slippery these guys are. This stutter stepping is good. It's not enough. 11 kills on this zealot. Okay, then he dies. I jinxed it. But wow, that's one of the more accomplished zealots I've ever seen on the channel. This guy's like, hmm, horribly outnumbered. I'll be going now if you don't mind. Just please ignore the fact that I was up here early killing, killing your stuff. leaving these pylons up here too that's great so the zealots fall back overlord says mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you guys did come all the way home finally busting down these pylons that are inside your natural base which represent potential threats but not really anything bad another hydrogen from action he's like well the protoss threw up a second base and all of this chaos Pylons are gone now. Excellent. All right. Well, Ling's running around here. We are working on more Ling's, working on speed for Hydralisks. Zealot checking to make sure there's not a third base down here from action, and there's nothing to see, so good scouting on your part, guys. Cybercore finally on the way. The ability to make anything but probes and zealots is finally almost unlocked here for Mini, which is hilarious to me. Yeah, speed first, once again, indicates Hydrobust on the other side of it, and Mini was definitely the cheeser in this game. Will he get away with it? Or is he going to get Hydrobusted into the ground as punishment for his hubris in thinking he could cannon rush, delayed cannon rush, no less. Somebody on the caliber of actions. He's lings, trying to get a surround on these guys. I'm like, we'd just rather deal with these zealots now than, like, have to worry about them for the next 10 minutes while they hide out and possibly jump into places where I don't want them to be. Yeah, but here we go. This group and this group and the Lings are like, never mind! Please don't kill us! Bad, bad pathing killed that Ling for sure. Action's on 10 drones, man. 
he had just made a huge swath of hydras for this stage of the game. He's getting a creep colony up. He's worried about Corsairs, which he should be because there is a Stargate just now finishing up. I mean, obviously not at the front, but, you know, Corsairs coming over to kill your overlords and slow down your macro, which we talked about before, is bad news bears. But, here we go. Cannons up. Fall back to the cannon, boys. Allow the gateway to die. This plus one attack for gateway for ground units here is problematic. Not actually target firing that down. Just busting in to try to take down these cannons. Is it working? These zealots are getting big time hits off, man. Ooh, that actually went a lot better. And then action, GG's out. Mini gets the win. What a sick hold that was. We got to watch that again. Uh, I think he went in. He went in too greedily. He delved too deeply. I do think maybe sitting out here and sniping that fort might have been a better move than just going for it here with two cannons up. These probes are fighting too. Yeah, some of these hydras just can't. They're just taking so many hits from these zealots, dude. Yeah, and he couldn't even get that cannon. And I don't know if he got that cannon, it would really matter. He's down 29 to 10 workers. He cut so many workers to make that happen. So Mini gets away with cannon rushing action, failing at it, technically. I mean, it delayed mining, it killed some drones, it, uh, you know, killed a bunch of lings. It was relatively effective, not all the way. And then on the follow-up, just has a ton of probes, a counter push, a counter low eco push here from action and held. Lost a cannon, lost a couple zealots. Overall, very, very well executed there by Mini getting that win. Woo! So good. 39 to 8 kill death ratio in favor of Mini. That's again what you want to see in any kind of a game. That's a crazy good ratio. And then outspending, yeah, just you, you outspent because of course you did. Because, of course, the, the Zerg just didn't have anything. <sighs> so, GG, man. That was fantastic. That was really good. Well done. Well done. Let's keep this thing moving. We got more of this stuff. Can you believe it? ka We're back on Polypoid, and it's Jadong again. He is bottom left. He's going to be blue. And in the top left, Mini, sporting the green. Whew. So a lot of PvZ cheese in this pack. We did get a Terran dying to Dark Templar, so Dark Templar fans rejoice. And Terra the Overlord's counting out the correct direction here on Polypoid. Giant four-player map. Giant four-player maps are good for cheese as well, despite what you may have heard from people on the street talking about StarCraft. Are there people on the street talking about StarCraft? Yes, I think somewhere in Korea, probably. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to be honest, even when StarCraft was at its biggest, like 98, 99, 2000, still the StarCraft kids at my school and my university were in an extreme minority. Like, we had, yes, there were people that loved StarCraft. We played StarCraft with each other. We got hype about StarCraft together, but there were not many of us at all, really. I think my high school had about 2,700 kids, and as far as I knew, maybe like 10 of us were into StarCraft back in those early, early days. And then at college, yeah, my dorm room, my dorm room, my dorm floor, probably had six kids or so that were into StarCraft. Which was nice. Anyway, point is, it didn't really take over America the way that it did South Korea. Right, right. Hatch firsting here is Jadong. Not going for the early craziness this time around. Which allows for maybe a little bit of zealot pressure. Zealot pressure. Here from Mini. Pool on the way before the gas. Recognizing, you know, sometimes if there's zealot pressure, having slowlings is just about as good as having fastlings. And lings out faster is better than having speed out faster in this situation, so we're gonna call it good. Forge on the way, just in case there's a big ling counterattack of some kind, and having a cannon would be used. Oh my gosh, no, he's doing it again. I lied! It's a super late forge. 
Oh my gosh, he walled himself in with pylons. He did it. Can this probe fight? Through? Oh, he extractor tricked his way into the inner sanctum. Does he do it again? Can he do it again? What the heck? Why is this extractor finishing? Oh my gosh, they got the probe. But, no, he shuts it down. Oh my gosh, he didn't have time to get a cannon up. Oh, Jadong, you madman. That was glorious. Beyond glorious. Whew. Well, Zealot's back here to cause some problems, but he really wanted to be part of a cannon rush. That were his aspirations when he was trained inside that gateway. Instead, he's gonna die with... Oh, he's so slippery. So slippery, man. Okay. One kill. Not great. Not ideal. Oh, mini. But, okay, that extractor... Make an extractor. Cancel it. Get inside the inner sanctum here and kill that probe and shut it down before the first cannon even starts coming up. That was hype. That was beyond hype. I guess he's expanding behind this. Mini is. A reasonable thing to do, I would say. Had to make these lings to deal with these zealots as per usual. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, zealot count high enough to deal with these lings. Absolutely, positively. Speed is on the way for the zerglings, but it is not here yet. However, could probably get a bit of a run by here. You can get a ling in here. At least maybe two. Oh, this way you just sort of die without accomplishing anything. We must fight before this cannon arrives. This cannon will change the calculus on this situation entirely. He really wants these zealots to die, but another zealot pops out. And then Jadong's like, can I get up this ramp? No, my lings are very injured and you have probes over there. So never mind. Man, I really wanted to get a look inside that main base, but absolutely not, says Minnie. No, third base coming up left side here from Jadong, an aggressive position. And once again, this has to be a Hydra Den, because it is. All right, man. So yeah, the response to absolutely shutting down, absolutely shutting down an enemy's cannon rush is going to be Hydra Bust. If you're a Zerg player, if you're a Terran, it's probably not Hydra Bust. But maybe you just make a ton of Marines and get some medics and go buh, 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 burn through this stuff fantastically. see what worker count we get up to here for Jadong. He's starting the Hydra bust speed upgrade as you do. And having this third base, a couple more drones are being added in here. Stargate on the way from Mini. So this is pretty similar to what we saw from Action, except the difference here being that the cannon rush of Mini got shut down a lot faster. So that probably hurts Mini in some way. Yeah, probe checks to see the third base here. No, it's actually over here. Okay, wow, all the way up to 22 drones. So Jadong's like, I gotta wait for my upgrades anyway. Let's get one gas. Let's make a bunch of hydras. Let's get speed upgrade. Let's get range upgrade. Let's try to bust this thing. On the other side of it, guess what we're working on? Ground weapons level one. These zealots are like, if there's not a third base for Jadong here, there's probably a third base for Jadong over here. This is a lot of zealots, man. This is like sunk. We could use a sunken level of zealots, sir. Oh, man. It's going to leave a couple of them to block this ramp, right? Nope. We're not even, well, yeah, we're going to leave everybody to block the ramp for a minute. And every Hydra we kill is one fewer Hydra list. Busting me. There we go. Kind of what you want, right? Oh, maybe you don't want Hydras dying necessarily. But you do want Ling's kind of tanking for your Hydras as you deal the damage here. Okay, good, good, good. No drones died in the making of that situation. Still sitting on 22 drones. And it's a plus one Corsair follow-up to the cannon rush for Mini. So now the question is, how do we deal with the Corsairs? Do we leave a couple Hydras back home? 
parked under the overlords? Do we throw up a spore? It seems at this stage, Jirudong's not really doing any of those things. His range upgrade is almost done, but once again, Minnie's like, I know how to deal with this. Perfect placement of these line of cannons. Losing the gateway is entirely unavoidable. And here we go, Hydra's busting again. Cannon down, cannon down. Once again, not worrying about the Zealots as much as you should, maybe. Yeah, if you kill these Zealots, you can bust this. But the Zealots plus the cannons are what makes this awesome. These Corsairs... Yeah, Corsairs hunting a bit. They have zero kills apiece. There are still, I guess, some Hydras left behind. Busting in again. Busting makes me feel good. You see that there's a new Ghostbusters movie that they dragged Bill Murray into? I don't know. I don't know if I feel good about it. Hey, man. This is Zealot, though. Two kills. Two Hydras. I mean, probably Hydras. Look at it just being like more. More. These Corsairs are still hunting down that left side. Looking for overlords. They're going to find one. Probes coming down, recognizing, yeah, this has been a complete sacrifice of worker count. Macro hatch. And another macro hatch from Daydong. Are you kidding me? This is amazing. Okay, he's being more patient. I like it. I like it. He's backing out when probes and zealots are here. Oh, gosh. Probes are dying, but it's still 33 to 20 workers in favor of Mini. Daydong does have to sacrifice a little bit of his brain power to deal with this Corsair plus one shenaniganry that's happening. Jumping in, busting a cannon, and then falling back. Killing some probes. There we go. Yeah, these probes, I think they're transferring. Bad pathing, guys. Bad pathing for you. Oh, Hydra's kind of sneaking up this right side. They get another cannon. Probes. Ow, ow, ow. Fighting, fighting, fighting. How many kills do you guys have? Zero kills and zero kills! Jadong's ability to handle these Corsairs is godlike right now. 27 to 20 workers. Every time I look, it's a fewer more probes. More probes have died. Another one gets obliterated. Cannon down. Cannon down. Fall back. Snipe off some probes. And now we're in a position where we can take down the Nexus. That'd be a massive win. If you're on three bases here, the Zealots and the probes are like, what do we do? Going in there seems like death, but can we just let the Nexus die? Yes, you can. You can let the Nexus die, and Mini does. And that's it. GG. Mini's like, my Nexus is dead. I can't handle this army. And bam, Jadong gets the win. Part of that was the investment of those Corsairs. Those Corsairs for Mini that got absolutely no damage. Well, I guess they damaged some overlords. But they didn't kill any of them, and that's what matters. No supply blocks here from Jadong. Really well executed. I loved the macro hatches that came up too. And this counter bust was fantastic. Man. Just more patient, right? More patient than what action did. And we just have to highlight once more that insane extractor trick move to get inside the place where the cannons were going to come up and force the probe to deal with his own mortality earlier than he wanted to. That was so sick. I always forget about these little snake statue doodads in Brood War. Like, it's so cool. There's some, I don't know, did Protoss worship snake gods back in the day? And this is his leftover from that? Or is this some other civilization from a long time ago that worshiped snake gods? Either way, I like it. That is a very cool statue. I wish my, I wish my town had one of those. Anyway, worship Jadong, man. That was a crazy move. Okay, we got a couple more to go here. But in case you like the final scores, great. Uh, 55 to 36 kill death ratio, not quite as good. If you are mini 20 to 0 buildings raised, a lot of that was cannons, but still. And then resource. Look at that! Wow! Total spent 10,176 for each of these players. How crazy is that? <laughs> wow. That's really, really fantastic. Way to go. All right. That was fun. Let's keep this cheese comp happening i guess no reason to end it here i'd say it's soul key the zerg this time on fighting spirit top left it's purple zerg soul key bottom left it is yellow protoss mini Woohoo! all right man so we're gonna do another gateway opening here throwing down a forge a little bit later and it's a delayed cannon rush with zealot pressure mini hmm I don't know. I don't know what's going on inside his head, man. But, man, Soul Key, ASL champion, dude. So, so, so good. 
Excellent. Excellent, excellent stuff. I like the purple Zerg. It just takes me back to the days when I was playing the campaign. When young Falcon was playing StarCraft campaign and just being like, what is, what are these guys in a hole? These Zerglings are fat. You can make them faster? I was like, holy smokes. And the speed of Zerg is what sold me on them. Yeah, are they squishy? Absolutely. Can you make a ton of them and they run quick? Uh-huh. That's all you needed. That's all you needed for me to make me like this game. I mean, I liked Warcraft 2 quite a bit too, but... I don't know. It didn't grip me as much as, it, uh, as StarCraft did, I suppose. There you go. Gateway again. Looks like we're saving up for another hatch. First, a Rooney here from Soul Key. Overlord pops. Couple more drones and expansion as soon as we can. By this guy right here. Got his claws out in front of him. Got his red eyes. Hard to see the red eyes on the purple, but they're there. The model's the same. It's just a skin color. There it is. There it be, lads. Probe scouting to see what's going on. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He almost caught that overlord. Almost. He's going to see it on the way back and be like, ah. <laughs> Dang it. All right. Well, okay. He checked the overlord pathing at the south. No. Tried to check it up here. Kind of missed on it. He'll be late on the scout, but it's a hat first play into pool again. Zealot moving out. Once again, Mini has no idea what is going on here, but moving a Zealot out is a fine thing to do, I'd always say. Zap, 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 zap. <laughs> zap, zap, pool done, extract dirt. Finishing and sixlings on the way to Zealot. No, just kidding. That's a Zealot and a pro walked into a bar joke. Another Zealot on the way. Okay, still no expansion yet. Another Zealot being produced. And there's the expansion. Okay. So, just, you know, regular old Zealot pressure here out of Mini. It's a little bit more aggressive than usual. Just one of these days, man. One of these days. They'll make maps where the Zealots don't fit behind the minerals and take up the entire width of the gap back there so only one Ling can attack them at a time. It'll be glorious. Look at him not even worried. Oh my God. Here too. Zolki's like, whatever. We'll just fight him. Fine, good enough. Good enough. Metabolic boost on the way. Once again, another Zerg player is like, well, had to make all these Lings and those Zealots delayed the tech and delayed everything for Mini. So how about... How did this guy get in? That's what Sulky is saying. He's like, how did this guy get in? Where did he come from? And the answer is, nobody knows. Maybe he teleported. Third base coming in from Sulky, 12 o'clock. Lings say, mm, there's a cannon coming up back here. We have to do something before this cannon comes up. Oh, this zealot micro. Mm. It is glorious. And it is good. Losing this gateway is not like the end of the world, but it's also not ideal. Okay, two lings got in. Not really enough to kill this cannon before it finishes. So two lings are inside the house here from Soul Key. Some probes do a main arc transfer down to the natural base. And these probes are like, we can handle it. With the support of a zealot friend, we can. So, just droning up behind this now is Sulky. He's like, all right, well, that was really well done by Mini, right? Got the expansion up, but got the wall, got the zealots and the cannon. Just required a little bit of excellent micro there from Mini to make that thing happen, and it did. Cybernetics core on the way. Not there. There. Lings get in, scout the cyber core, say, mm -hmm, yes, yeah, nothing too surprising, but always nice to have your assumptions clarified, right? It's just nice. It's another Hydra Den from Soul Key. 
Man, we have seen a lot of Hydroden play here, huh? These lings have speed now. They feel free. They feel happy. As they should. However, still Zealots down here. Many didn't sleep. Didn't drop the ball in having this defended by Zealots. And in fact, the Zealots might move out a little bit. No, working on the ground weapon upgrade here. They're not going to have speed for some time because there is no Templar uh, Citadel, rather, on the way. And that's okay. Citadel coming up next, though, Falcon. Don't worry about it. These guys will have speed lickety-split. Soon enough, they'll have speed. They'll have plus one attack. It'll be all very scary for the third player to try to handle. Ooh, okay. Another gateway coming up in a weird position. I guess maybe trying to hide it from this Zergling that's going to die. Oh, no. Zergling's like, I'll fight you. You want to fight, little punk? I'm here killing a Stargate. Don't mind me. Ah, Zealot showed up. Run! on for it. Lings once again try to bust in, but no. Say the cannons, absolutely not. So, first course arrow of the day, heading on out. And there are some overlords to kill. Are there any hiders left home to defend our defenseless overlords? And the answer is no. Wait, yes, there is one. One pops out of an egg right here. But like, seriously, you actually have to... Oh, he got it. He got it. It is basically a supply block here on Soul Key. Okay, so this is another situation where we have to micro Corsairs on one side and then against Hiders on the other side and then micro your Hiders on this side and against Corsairs on the other side. So Gateway gets sniped. It took some early damage from the Ling, so it died a lot faster than it usually does. Ford, working on that plus one attack again. It's a big deal. Big deal to not lose it. See any indication that this are they waiting on the ring? Could they not hit this? Man, I don't know. Getting rid of that plus one attack would be fantastic. Are you guys doing good? One kill. Ooh, you both have a kill. Alright, this is better stuff than we saw against Jadong from Mini. That's for sure in the last game. Corsair is getting work done. What is this? <laughs> Storm on the way. A DT on the way, which mm, this early to me, I don't know. It could be DTs. We saw some amazing DT Corsair play with Bisu and uh, Beast, I want to say, in a game that I posted last week. An amazing game, by the way. You should check that one out if you like ZVP. But also, it could just be Maelstrom. I mean, Maelstrom is super sick. All right, Hydra count, big, but that plus one attack, that speed is done. The Hydras are at zero, zero, but they have their speed and their range, which is basically just as good as having a plus one attack in this situation. Overlord uh, speed coming in. Just keep them away from these Corsairs as much as Zergly possible. One kill a piece on those still, nothing great. But, if there are no overlords at this base, then this Zealot DT attack is suddenly 40% more effective. Alright, here we go. Zealot's packed into a corner, and this DT's like, I don't have to worry about that. Swap. And swap. Nice. The response here is pretty okay. Losing un is not great. Losing two Hydralisks, also not great. That's four kill DT. Not too bad, not too bad. Overlord pops, chases him out. Zealots, so it is. It's Zealots, Corsairs, and DTs. I don't know if you have enough, though. I'm looking at it. Storm, however. This is the first game where we've gotten Storm. So here go there you go. Storm up! Storm up! And once the Hiders have been bruised up by Storm, the Zealots have such an easier time with them. Oh, man. Ten minutes Storm timing. And that's it. That's it. GG. Sulky taps out. Look at that storm on that mineral line too. Six stuff mini. 
It's like, you know what I've been missing in these previous games? It's been Storm. Why haven't I gotten Storm? <laughs> oh, why would I ever skip Storm? It's a good point. It's a good point. <laughs> All right, man. Mini gets the win here. I mean, this where is the High Templar who got that storm off? Because that is a disgusting storm. Two storms, no less. Uh, we turned them into an Archon, so we can't tell. Still, sick stuff, man. DT's ton, a Zealot High Templar Corsair timing attack. Against someone who's going Mass Hydra. I like it. I like it a lot. That was fantastic. 39,000 points to 26,000 points there in favor of Mini. Mini uh, outproducing the Zerg, getting, uh, wow, outkilling the Zerg by, like, a 70 to 10 split. That's insanely good. And then outspending two makes a lot of sense. Had the resources needed to get that storm. Excellent stuff. GG. And more cheese is coming up next. Jadong's back on Blitz Y, a very, very new map. Top right spawn versus bottom right spawn. Top right, it's going to be Jadong. Bottom right, it's going to be Mini. Uh, if you've seen this map before, if you've been watching ASL, then yes, you have. Check it out. Check it out how weird it is, man. So we've got a main base. It is super, super big. Good for drops. Good for a lot of gateways and barracks and stuff. We've got a fairly normal... Uh, natural here. Walling off is a little bit tricky, but not too bad. And then this is the path you get to get to your enemy here. Holy smokes. We've got a base here you can take. And this little narrow thing here is the path you need to take to get all the way to your opponent's main base or natural base, man. It is so weird. And this is basically an island base, right? Yes, it is. Yes, indeed it is. We've got hallucinated Ursidons. Boop! And mineral fields blocking. Hmm. Are they blocking command centers from landing? This is a weird place for it. Why don't I just put it right here? Don't know. Don't know indeed. Alright, what's the play? Well, it's a gateway opening here from Mini. And then you have this part of the map, which is like... Pretty normal, I guess. I mean, just a little back entrance if you want to expand to the corners. It is a little bit annoying to have to deal with. The Zergs are not going to worry about it as much. And then minerals only, minerals only. And then a pretty nice base over here. So, meh, meh. Meh, meh, I always say. So, yeah, Blitz Y. Weird map. Takes you some time to learn it, said Tastosis when they were casting Group B from the group stages of ASL 17. All right, hatch done, pool on the way. I mean, hatch isn't done, but it's just about done. And it's a second gate. All right, it's an actual two gate opening here. I guess we saw that in game one from Mini. It was kind of a proxy three gate opening, which was very interesting. Is he, f is he gonna fake, ooh. Is this a fake out? I kind of like this if it is. Dude. Oh, and then throwing up a shield battery in Jadong's natural base. I almost just said in your opponent's natural base, but this is Jadong he's doing it to. What in the name of Fergus McDudson is this? Mini, this is filthy stuff, dude. Okay, shield battery's up. Not much these drones can really do about it. Lings are on the way. Probe takes a nice hit off that shield battery as it rolls in. Two more probes show up, and a zealot is here. Immediately going to town on these creeps. The creep colonies can stop all of this. Mini's only in 11 probes, and three of them are over here fighting, you guys. Oh, there's a zealot in range of the shield battery. I don't know if he is. Roll in. Oh, he takes the heal. Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. The sunken is up, though. The sunken is up, and the sunken combined with the lings. I think Jadong just shut this down. Yeah, two sunkens up, a bunch of lings, and GG. Mini taps out. It was cheeky. I liked it. I really, really liked it from Mini. Just didn't quite work out in the end, you know? Wow. That was amazing. 
I mean, that was... Jadong shuts it down, gets Sunkins up, lost that one, but he had this guy, he had this guy, just made lings, used the drones to fight as necessary, and man, that is cheeky. That is a cheeky play to throw up a shield battery in Jadong's natural mineral line. Of all the places you could have put this thing, you put it here. My goodness, that was awesome. Yeah, so it was a good attempt. I like it. I like the attempt from any to make that happen. I mean, this is going to be even a less interesting setup here for the points as I take a drink from my water mug. Yeah, four to two units killed is hilarious. Structures raised, zero. Resources, extremely close. Yeah, fine, fair enough. Nicely done, nicely held by Jadong. And he gets the win here against Mini two times. I think that's the second win in this cheese comp for him. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That was Man, I loved it. This is so good. This is so fun. I hope you're having a good time because I certainly am. All right. Solki is back on Troy. Can he get revenge here against Mini? Or is he going to go 0-2 against Mini in this cheese comp? Top right is Protoss. Bottom left it is Zerg. And this is Troy. Is it a take? I don't know. Is it a take on Troy from ancient Greece? Uh, Greece, Greece mythology, Greek mythology. There we go. I'm trying to do both of those at the same time. It's supposed to be like a face here, two eyes, smiley, something. A Vespian geyser in his forehead. For some reason, he's got some like arms down here, kind of. Right. And then he's got some legs, and then a third appendage we're not going to mention. I don't know. <laughs> Does kind of look like a dude, though. Some kind of a um, explicit gingerbread man, I guess is how we're going to explain it here. Moving on, though. I don't know. I don't know why this is called Troy. I don't see any obvious allusions to Greek mythology. Good old Helen of Troy. The face that launched a thousand ships is what she is referred to as by historians. Ooh, Mini heading up this way is... Oh, gosh. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. No. This isn't one of those maps, is it? No, it's not. There is a current map, though, in ASL where you can lock your opponent into an island of their own main base. It's incredibly punishing if you can pull it off. Is this it? Oh, this might be it, actually. Gosh, it is. It totally is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've talked about this a bunch, right? What these assimilators can do. If you kill them, the resulting footprint of a Vespian geyser is bigger than these assimilators, and it locks ground units from being able to traverse this at all. And if you get down here and wipe out these assimilators and your opponent doesn't have anything on this side of the wall, they're a one-basing island-mapping fool stuck on an island, and you have the rest of the map. Tastosis taught me that. Well, I was at the gym the other day. They were explaining someone tried to do it. It was a TVP. Someone tried to do it against Light, and Light was like, no. Or Light was trying to do it against a Protoss, and the Protoss was like, no. Either way. Yeah, it... Like, the ability to lock your opponent on one base is sick. It's so sick. And mean. And it really means you have to pay attention to that thing. I mean, I don't know. For Zergs, I guess, you just go hatch first. And then even if this gets locked off, you can you still have access to the outer areas before you get drops and stuff, right? Or mutas and stuff. So that's good. I guess not as good against Zerg. Probably better against Terran and Protoss and whatnot. So, Sulky says, how about you not get Storm? How does that sound? And Minnie says, well, I don't have any gas yet. So sure, man. That seems fine. I like these orangelings traipsing along the orange desert tile set here on Troy. Big fan of the desert tile set. Be a good setting for Dune. Dune 2, man. Falcon recommends. Go watch it. That's what I have to say. Probe Scouts Around says, hmm, no hydrogen, no lair. Gas is on the way, but just for metabolic boost. Are you going to pull these guys off? No, not pulling off gas. Instead, maybe we are going to get a lair here. So it's just slow lots versus slow lings, which is fun. I don't know. 
It's just, it's hard to get hits off, man. I love this line of zealots up here. You can't get past us. We are airtight, friend. With this pylon's help. Lings are like, can we? Can we run by? What do we think, gents? Maybe once we have speed, they say. We're still getting gas. What for? What is your more gas for here, Soul Key? Looking for a Hydra Den. Really, really looking for a Hydra Den. Really looking for a lair. Something to spend this gas on. I mean, he's trying to get a forge up to get a cannon back here, which will shut this down eventually. Ling's hacking away at that pylon a little bit. Dude, they're ha Okay, there's your lair. Finally, we get a lair. But they just got 200 gas. This was not wait for 100 gas and get a lair. This was wait until 300 gas and get a lair. Which, I, I, I really can't chalk that up to anything other than just kind of screwing it up a little bit, you know? All right. Well, cannons are coming up behind our zealot line, so... Nope! You can see this, right? Yeah, he keeps popping up the ramp and seeing it says, well, all right. Made all these speedlings for nothing. That totally sucks. Yeah, he has so many speedlings. Ling drop, maybe? Maybe load up lings and slow overlords. Drop them here. And then go to town here inside the main base with like 20 speedlings? That has to be what this is. You're not getting through this wall with speedlings. I'm sorry. But he needs an overlord in position. Okay, he's sending this overlord out to maybe, possibly make this work. He's also getting a spire, so maybe this is just, we show up with mutas, we bust the wall down. Oh, the wall is gone, guys. The wall left, the wall is moving out, friends. It's a lot of zealots. See, this is the difference between Zerg and Protoss. Protoss can have a million zealots and 24 probes, but if the Zerg wants a million Zerglings, they need to have 11 drones. Just how it works. Is he trying? He might be trying to wall off the main base as its own thing. All right, the Ling's counterattack. Uh, that's not a wall. Oh my gosh. Wall it off, 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 wall it off. He's doing it defensively. I cannot believe this. He does it. He does it. He locks out all of these zealots. He still has to worry about these ones, but he can clear those up. On the other side, there is a cannon that the Lings are trying to get to, but also they're killing a ton of probes, but I think that's held. Okay, woof, cannon does its work there. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe he walled off his own main base in order to keep these zealots out. That is so sick. And that's it, so he taps out, he's like, <laughs> He's like, I can't one base versus you. What was I thinking? Look at all these cannons coming up in case there are mutas on the way. Because there's mutas on the way. But not enough mutas to shut this down. No siree, Bob. Yeah, so these are just mini out macroing soul key. Part of the trick here is Zergs need to make drones up until the minute they need units, right? Which is why soul key's economy was so bad. He made a bunch of lings early. They got nothing done. That reduced the drone count to a slow amount. And then trying to recover was tough. And if you're Protoss, you just keep making probes and keep making zealots when you can off of two gates and you're good to go. You have a much, much, much bigger army than Sulky does. And Sulky has to do something desperate like this. Which is so funny. Oh, first time on the channel. Somebody doing this on Troy. What a day. What a day it is. Hmm. Hunter, uh, 13,000 to 12,000 points there. Soul Key outproduced, but only 2 to 1 ratio and really made nothing but links today, so that's not good. 5 to 1 kill death ratio for Mini is ample. 6 to 1 buildings raised in favor of Soul Key, whatever. And then Mini outspending the Zerg player. That's the play. All right, we got one more game remaining. We're going to go back to Hero, where all of this started. Let's see what we get. It's Apocalypse, and it's Hero. He's wearing the classic purple bottom left. Bottom right, it's our Protoss. You know who it is. Uh, yeah, so starting with Hero, ending with Hero. Good symmetry, I think. I don't know if RJB did that on purpose, but 
I like it. I like the symmetry. Everybody likes symmetry, right? Symmetrical faces, science has shown, are more attractive to people than non-symmetrical faces. With exceptions, right? Sometimes your face is so, it's just like a little bit off and it makes you unique in some way and then you're attractive. Yeah? Like the little bit of a crooked nose like on Owen Wilson. Eh? Eh? Does it do it for you? Anyway. Doo -doo -doo. Denzel Washington has a very symmetrical face. He's a very handsome actor. What other examples are there, man? Uh, Brie Larson, I think, has an exceptionally symmetrical face last time I read. Yeah, there are a lot of examples in Hollywood. That is certainly the case. Hmm. All right. So, I'm going to say it's a gateway here for Mini. Oh my gosh, it's a gateway. Yeah, Mini loves his gateway openings here, man. He loves putting zealot pressure on Zerg players and making them sweat. And making them deal with it. Okay, well, we're here on Apocalypse and yet another desert map, which is a good map. I like it. Oh my gosh, expanding down here. What about here? What's wrong with here? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, like right here. Is he hiding? Okay, this is nuts. Because look, the probe comes in and says, you don't have any gas, you don't have a pool yet. Obviously, you're expanding, but where could it be? Yeah, that pool is late, sir. That is not a pool first. That is not a nine pool timing, friend. Because there's a hatch down here. He's got to just, he's like, all right, where else can we put it? What is the most likely place for this to be? And the answer is down here. So let's cannon rush it. What? I mean, are you crazy? He is getting a fort doing the thing again. I don't know if Minnie came up with this strategy, but it is bonkers. I like it. Oh my gosh, can he see this? Nope. Yep. Look at him sending a drone over. Like, all right. All right, Minnie. The shenanigans. The shenanigans with Protoss are real. So this is a shutdown play for sure. And then these drones aren't even that far off the line. Mm, just trying to buy time now for the pool to finish. You do not want to fight a Zealot if you don't have to. You want that cannon to die, though. You really want that cannon to die. So he... Gosh, you can't lose drones, though. Oh, my gosh. Did he buy enough time with the drones that this is going to work? He's getting up a creep. He's getting up a second creep. Zealot hacking away. Sunkins absolutely destroy cannons in a straight-up 1v1 battle. That's why you need to be hacking away at these things before they turn into sunkins. Because the sunkins will win. Oh my gosh, Ling's showing up. I think Hero may have... Yeah, I think he did it. He did it. Sunken's up. Bam. Sunken. This cannon down. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look how fast this cannon dies. That Sunken had sub-50% health. And it was like, nope. Sorry. Of course, the reasoning being that Sunken's can't shoot up. So you might as well make them more powerful than cannons that have that versatility. Sweet. I'm not even sure if you really have to engage with this. Sniping the probe is nice, though. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with that. All right. All right. Everything dead. Run back home. Get out of here, guys. Zealots are fighting. Zealots are dying. The micro is insane. Oh my gosh, this is such good micro. The final zealot had three kills. Well, he might get a fourth if he's lucky. He does not. It's like just getting a surround on a zealot is so freaking hard with slow links. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I like how there are two overlords over here being like, mm -hmm, yes, extra scouting. Mm -hmm, yes, extra, extra scouting. May throws up a cannon and says, get out of my airspace, you giant overgrown balloons. And, uh, well, um... Dude, is Mini gonna lose the final game of the Mini Cheese compilation? This is not looking good for him. I'll tell you that much. Lings get inside the house. Five of them get in here. All in varying states of health. Some of them are super mega injured, like this little guy with five HP. Probe can turn and murder him immediately. Yeah. I mean, wasting a zealot attack on that seems like 
un it's unnecessary, I guess, is how I would describe it. All right, cannons up. Future run bys are going to be difficult. These lings are an absolute thorn in Minnie's side, though. And once again, Minnie forces lings out of the Zerg player. And then the Zerg player is like, well, might as well run across the map with them. And then Minnie's like, ah, now I have to deal with lings for the next five minutes. It's a problem of your own making, sir. Problem of Protoss's own cheesiness is my experts analysis here but seriously thanks for watching this hope you're having a fun time with it this was a lot of fun for me i love you all especially my patrons at patreon.com slash falcon paladin my channel members by clicking the join button down below this video or any video you can become a channel member of the falcon paladin brood war channel for as little as a couple bucks a month at the zergling level hydro levels five bucks ultralisk level i think it's ten dollars a month which is awesome we've actually got somebody who's at the overmind level which is pretty neat too but yeah, a lot of support out there. And if you want to support me to just a one-time donation instead of these annoying subscriptions everybody's asking for these days, right? Right. PayPal is a good way to do it. Just paypal.com. And then my email address for that is falconpaladin at gmail.com. Uh, a lot of people enjoy that one. Just a one-time donation. They don't have to worry about additional charges showing up on their bank statement next month they forgot about, right? Uh, I totally get that. So yeah, PayPal is a good way to go too. Anyway, this is a bunch of links here from Hero on the follow-up. He's getting a lair. But these three hatches are generally, with 18 drones, going to be lings. So it's going to be lings probably into mutalisks then. Because, boy howdy, is there not a hydralisk gun here from... Yeah. From our zerg. Sunken has to kill another sunken in a brutal act of zerg on zerg violence. But the mineral pathing was all screwed up. What else was he supposed to do? What is this guy doing? Hiding? How did these lings find him? Hmm, interesting. All right, well, got to do something crazy here, Minnie. What is it? The answer is apparently not Stargate. Oh, Minnie just GG's? WTF, man, what was that? Wait, 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 what? What happened? I mean, it can't possibly be that the lings are just killing probes constantly, was it? No, the lings got cleared out of here, right? Yeah, there's no lings here. It's 16 to 16 workers, which isn't great, but not the end of the world either. Does he, I gotta see his vision. I must know what he saw. He saw a million lings and said, you know what? We're fine. Like... We've got a cannon. We've got a hard wall here. It's not a big deal. Maybe we want, we want to pull these zealots back so that the links don't get an easy run by. Yeah, remainder transferring some probes down to the natural base, as you do. 18 to 18 workers, fine. Man, look at Hero firing up eight drones, though, man. Dude, Hero's a monster. He is truly a monster, Zerg. Yes, Mini, just he delayed the heck out of a cyber core. We're at seven minutes, and the cyber core is not close to the I mean, It's not done yet, it's close to done. It's not quite there yet. The zealot gets back here, doesn't see a fourth base, that's good news, right? I don't know if he like he loses the zealot and that's when he GG's out. Yeah, that's it. That's when he GG's out. What the heck? <laughs> I do not understand. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're at the end now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that zealot dying was the impetus for Mini tapping out here. I guess part of it. Was it late? Is a Stargate too late compared to the Spire timing? No, not really. Stargates build way faster than Spires do. What the heck is going on with this spawning pool here? This replay glitched out a little bit. It's done, but also it's morphing. Huh. And this is all gone except for this pylon? And it shows up in the minimap, but it doesn't show up here. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, Hero had a nice worker advantage. That was awesome. 
You had macro hatches coming in. I guess Mini just game sensed that he was way too behind. He didn't want to play from behind here, and as a result, he just tapped. It's still a weird GG timing, though. Maybe somebody smarter than me can come in and tell me what happened there. There are people smarter than me out there, right? Yeah, so many. What do we got? 79 to 43 units outproducing by hero here. He got killed at a lower ratio, which is always nice. Four to zero structures raised and resources spent. Hero outspending Mini a little bit. It's just, it was economy. A lot of it was economy at the end there, I think, that had to do with Mini being like, no. But anyway. GG! That was interesting, to be sure. And that was overall a very fun Mini Cheese compilation for March of 2024. Hope you had a good time with it. Again, I know I've said this like eight times during the cast, but that was a ton of fun. We got saw some weird stuff, man. We got to see the first example of somebody locking themselves into their own main on Troy, which is hilarious. We saw Jadong do a super sweet extractor trick to take down a cannon rush by Mini, which was very cool. We saw a killer storm timing out of Mini with Zealots and Corsairs and DTs and just crushing the Zerg underfoot there. And just uh, a ton more stuff, more than I can talk about. So again, if you're here, I appreciate you and I love you. And that's going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.